Hey guys, my name is Haley and I'm a tutor here at CHAG. I usually tutor math and sciences, but today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the social identity theory. So this idea of the social identity theory was initially proposed in 1979 by Henry Teifel and John Turner. Um, they proposed that our identities are split into two distinct parts. The first being our personal identity or self-identity. And that kind of encompasses our personality traits and the things that are special to us and make us who we are as individuals. Um, these are the things that make us distinct from other people. Our social identity, on the other hand, which is going to be more what we're focusing on today, um, are the, is the groups that we fall into and the groups that we associate ourselves with. Um, so this could be student, this could be athlete, parent, this could be teacher. Um, this could also be something that's kind of arbitrary like a hockey fan or just a general sports fan um, or fan of a particular music group. And they can also encompass our race, religion, or ethnicity. Um, we tend to associate ourselves with multiple groups just because as human beings we're very dynamic. Um, we have multiple traits and characteristics and interests. So we fall into many groups and we associate ourselves with many different groups. Um, and these groups are also split into in-group and out-group. And the best, ways, the best way to explain this is through an example. So as a student, um, your in-group would be other students. And those are people who you can mostly identify with the best as a student. Um, the out-group are people who aren't students. They might be someone um, like a parent who's not a student, um, just someone who went maybe into the workforce immediately after high school, and just generally other people who aren't students. Um, and we tend to favor our in-group more than our out-group. That's why these are important. Um, we tend to associate more with other students and people more like ourselves than people who aren't really in our in-group and don't really share the, the same characteristics as us. And we are put into these groups by the three steps proposed by Tyfell and Turner, um, social categorization, social identification, and social comparison. So social categorization is the first step, and that's kind of on a subconscious level. So as a student, you're thrown into the school system and education system, and you don't really identify with this as you don't really identify yourself as a student initially. Um, you just know that you're supposed to be there and supposed to learn. So this happens on a subconscious level and leads to social identification. And during social identification, you begin to adopt the social norms of these groups. So as a student, you know to raise your hand before you speak. Um, you know not to talk out of turn. You know to go to class, to respect your teacher, professor, and to do your homework. Those are all social norms of being a student. Um, in social identification, we also begin to find a sense of pride and self-esteem from the groups that we associate ourselves with. And that's the biggest thing about these groups, is we find a sense of pride and self-esteem. And this might be the key to why we tend to favor our in-groups more than an out-group. And then the final step of the three is social comparison. So we begin to compare our in-group with other groups. Um, we might also compare other groups with other groups, too. So this is kind of where in-groups and out-groups come back into play, and also when we tend to favor our in-group more than an out-group. So in the 70s and 80s, Tyfell and Turner actually did experiments where the social comparison was exposed, um, and they split British school boys into two different groups based on their preference in artists. And that was something meant to be arbitrary and meaningless. Um, ultimately, because we don't tend to dislike other people just because of who their favorite artist is. Um, and so the groups were supposed to assign their group points and the other group points. And the results show that the group tend, a group tend to give their own group more points. And so that kind of proved this idea of in-group favoritism. And that's when you tend to look at your group and your in-group more favorably and positively than you look at the out-group. Um, this also showed us that even the minimal the most minimal conditions were enough to kind of make us look at our own in-group more favorably than an out-group. Um, this also showed us that we tend to exaggerate the similarities within our in-group because of something kind of arbitrary like our favorite artist. Um, so we tend to exaggerate our similarities with our in-group and we tend to exaggerate our differences with the out-group. So that's kind of what this experiment proved and also showed um, in-group favoritism. So I hope this helped you guys understand social identity 
the social identity theory more and what social identification, categorization, and comparison are. Um, if you have any questions about social identity theory or anything else, feel free to message me or set up a lesson. Thanks.